Take this sample, whack it in the sampler, bit of detune, change the decay, play this sequence, and add some delay. So it's been over three decades since this iconic track was released. But have you ever wondered what went into the making of this classic track? So to fully understand it, join me as I walk in the footsteps of greatness and recreate it piece by piece. So there's actually quite a bit more to the main riff than just taking that sample. Let's look at that in a moment, but first let's look at the drums. Okay, so the drums, we've got a TR-909, we've got the kick, and then we have this pattern with these closed hats. Clap, snare, lay it up, and a little open hat here for this pattern. Then the next thing to come in is the TR727, another classic box. What made this easier is this interview with Kevin Saunderson. I don't normally have that luxury. Then we get this reverse clap. I didn't notice it at first, but it adds quite a lot to the sound. So I just sampled the clap and reversed it. And this pattern is a little bit different. So we have these faster open hats coming in. It's quite a distinctive pattern. And this is the main pattern that goes throughout the track. Next, let's look at the string. I think this is a really key part of this track. It's such a kind of cool, fun melody. And I never thought it was a string sound. Like normally, string the way strings are used, they're very long and kind of slow. Like quite often in dance music, you'll get like a very long sustained note like that, or you might have a chord. But here, we don't have that, it's like a lead sound. So it sounds like this. What I've used for this is the M1 VST, the Korg M1. I'm pretty sure he didn't use an M1, but to me this sounds close enough for jazz. So let's listen to that in the mix. And that's another lovely little detail is this reverse bit. I recreated that by basically bouncing the whole track and then just for this little quarter of a bar and then reversing it. So it's just this and then reversed. That brings us on to the bass. Basically, there's a very famous patch called this called lately bass or solid bass. It sounds like this. So here I'm using the Arturia DX7. So this is an FM synth, and this is a very famous patch. So the bass just backs up the main riff. And it's interesting, they bring it in here temporarily, but then it kicks in fully here. And it makes a really nice difference. If you hear without, and then with, Brilliant, but also it's actually contributing to the main riff in another way, which we'll look at in just a second. So I'd just like to mention, I've got a sample pack out, Gaio FX, 50 sounds, really useful for your production. They're all risers and FX sounds to put in your transitions. And lots of risers. So I think that could be really useful and I'd love the support if you'd like to buy it. So I managed to track down a little bit of the acapella, not very much. 
We don't really need a crowd to have a party. And it's such a cool little melody. Just on two notes for a while and then going up to more. Just a funky beat and you'd again to start it and So really, I think this vocal makes this tune and Kevin Saunderson himself said this. I love vocals. I love melody. I love stuff like Ain't Nobody, Shaka Khan, uh, um, Jocelyn Brown. So it was really like, that was easy for me. And I was a little different than the other guys from Detroit. You know, it was all about straight instrumental. And I was about like, I was kind of like 50-50. So I love that. Those are the main elements. Let's go back to the riff and really see what's going on there. I've really spent a lot of time on this and I'm still not quite happy, and I'll, I'll try and show you why. So I just put the sample in, and let's just play that. It's kind of quite, you know, it is the sound, but this is the original. I couldn't get that same envelope. It's like a fast attack, but it's got a length to it, and I've, I've tweaked and tweaked, you know, with the decay and all of these settings. I put it on the shorter version. I've also tweaked the start point. This is as close as I've been able to get. But then... It's a sample of a chord, and it's a mixture of some instruments that we blended together to come up with that unique sign. I thought, ah, okay, let's try a layer. What would be a natural thing to try? The bass line, the bass layer, this solid bass. So I added that in, and if we turn that on, I'm not sure if you can hear that on YouTube, but to me that's already a lot closer. The reason I'm using this sampler is because it, it enables you to get the quality of old samplers. So I'm bringing the sample rate down, the bit rate down to 12, which is the bit rate of the S900, which is the sampler Kevin Saunderson used. Um, I've added hiss all the way up. <laughs> which gives it a brightness and I'm saturating a lot. And actually I've done that triple <laughs> because firstly I tried to recreate it with this decimort, okay, which does a similar kind of thing. So again, I'm reducing the sample rate again. I'm also EQing it and I've got a tape and I've got the delay. I'll speak about the delay in a minute. I'm basically doing the same thing again to get it much more crusty. I think that's quite a lot closer. If we listen to it without even these two, it's too clean, it's too nice. So this is really giving us a lot of that old sampler feel that we need to get closer to the sound. I put a bit of tape just for a bit of extra crustiness. I didn't do it that carefully. And then the delay was quite important. So if you listen to the original, you actually hear phasing. If you just listen a sec. You can hear this kind of phasing. What I did to get that, I put this Echo Boy Junior on normal, not wide or ping pong. No feedback, dotted eighth notes, and we get this. So I'm pretty happy, but it's still quite different something about the, the envelope. But I think this is a great thing about doing these, and this has helped me so much as a producer, that when you're really trying to get something one for one, you really put the effort in. And I think this is what we often don't bother to do when we're making our own tunes. We can be a bit impatient, really. We want results right now. But when you start to take the time, and you, you kind of get into a different mindset, a much more patient mindset. You just get into the details, and I think it's really valuable. It, this has really helped me in my own productions. Speaking of which, okay, just want to mention this, my new track, The Luck Descending. I've really poured my heart and soul into this. Uh, it's kind of the encapsulation of everything I love about dance music, essentially. <laughs> I'm super pleased with it. So check it out here. So I hope you found that helpful. It's a real piece of dance music history and it's been brilliant to really get inside it and work out what makes it tick. 
So I also offer one-to-one coaching. So if you'd like a bit of help with your production, have a look at my website. I'd be really glad to work with you. Check out the sample pack. I think it's really good value and I think it's really useful. Also check out my Patreon. I won't get any ad revenue from this track because of a copyright claim. Um, So if you want to show me a bit of support, consider joining my Patreon. And I do upload the parts for the tracks I recreate on there. So there's already quite a lot there and more to follow. Check out my new tune. I'm super proud of it. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.